What's going on ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another Chase on Two Wheels first ride here at Mountain Motorsports. We are at the Roswell location as we have been for the last couple first rides. Today we are going to be riding the Ducati, the 2019 Ducati Diablo 1260. This is the base model. There is an S model. A couple grand more you get Olins and a quick shifter. I'm sad to say this one doesn't. But this is the brand new Diablo and uh I'm pretty excited, man, because there's not really another bike that kind of is in the market with the Diablo. It kind of just lives on its own. It's supposedly a cruiser, but I mean, we all know this is not what a cruiser looks like. Before we get started, make sure to smash the like button if you are excited about a Diablo first ride, and subscribe to the channel if you like motorcycles, which, why are you watching this if you don't? Regardless, ah. Uh, no key we're back to the no key game ladies and gentlemen so 2019 diablo we get a flicky key which is literally pointless <laughs> i love tricking you guys with these fancy bikes that don't have keys uh so yeah we're gonna push this thing up we're gonna push this thing on or something there we go we have to flicky this guy oh they ha it has the uh colored things in the background oh i love it all right we're in neutral, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's do a first ride. So guys, this first start episode is brought to you by the guys over at Ridge Wallets. They're the guys that make these really slick looking wallets. These wallets are RFID blocking, slim, and come with a lifetime guarantee. If you guys are in the market for a new wallet, and I love mine so far, you can get 10% off and free worldwide shipping if you go to ridgewallet.com chase and use the code chase. I'll leave a link in the description for you guys. Thanks Ridge for sponsoring this video. If you guys want to support a company that's supporting me to make better first rides for you guys, make sure to go check out ridgewallet.com slash chase and use the code chase to get 10% off a brand new awesome wallet. I'm going to probably complain about my finger. I have this like giant cut. Uh, installing hoses on motorcycles tends to be very dangerous. I ended up cutting my hand because it was the inside of a freaking engine on the Panigale we're rebuilding to give away. Oh God, no, leave. You're, you're not supposed to be here. Go ahead, ceremonial, just turn it off. <laughs> stop being, stop being that guy. You, everybody here knows you're that guy. That was a good under over. You though. planned that it. Was you pl over. I was wondering why you were chilling. All right. All righty. Now that we've been kill switched. Uh, so we do have a extensive electronics package on this thing. We've got three modes, urban, touring, and sport. We've got all the info, which is nice. Got gas gauge. Also, the guys in here were showing me that you can dictate all of these numbers. So traction control, ABS. Ah traction control, ABS, and wheelie control. 
engine uh, power. You know, you guys know we like starting out in urban. Do we hold it to make it go away? Yep, so we're in urban now, perfect. All right, uh, sitting on it, you guys know I'm 5'10", and I will continue to promise you that I will find my inseam one day. Look how bent my legs are. I'm Even a short rider would be able to handle this bike. I will say it's a little heavy, back and forth, especially, it's like front heavy, if that makes sense. Whoo, yeah, it is not light. But, hopefully meaning not light, it will be stable. So, without further me blah, 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 let's go, dude. Look how far my hands are up. Also, this jacket is disgusting. I need a new one. I'm actually surprised at how high my, my the foot pegs are. Is They seem a little higher than you'd kind of expect for a bike like this. All right, that off. Yeah, the pegs are a little higher. I gotta be, I'm, I'm, I did not expect the pegs to be this high. I wonder if that's to make it have a sportier feel. So we're in urban mode. Throttle seems really controllable just sitting around in traffic. I gotta say, I like this body position for, for this bike. Uh, you know, I'm kind of sitting in the bike. I've got this big old like tank situation happening in front of me. I like this. This is comfortable. I'm interested to see what this thing's going to be like on the highway though because we don't have any windscreen and if this is supposed to compete in like a cruiser, like I, let's call it a sport cruiser. If it's supposed to be a sport cruiser, it should be good on the highway. So we'll have to see. Alright, let's get in front of this van. Whoa, okay, even in urban boys, holy shit. We're in the lowest mode and like if you give it the throttle you, you need to give it and not hit this van. Uh, it's still got some pull. It comes on real smooth though. Urban is phenomenal. Urban's gonna be your kind of chill, maybe it's raining, maybe you're in a lot of traffic, you want a smooth ride. Urban is exactly what you want. Because we're in a much higher gear than we need to be in. Let's pop down. The body position of this is so weird. It's like it's like this hybrid between it wants to give you this cruisery vibe, but the pegs are up high and you kind of have to sit aggressively. I like that sound, letting the clutch out. That's pretty cool. While I'm talking, I'm going to get this thing into touring mode. Not sport. Not sport. We're going into touring. Okay. I do think that with the rear brake where it is, the, the foot peg... I have to move my foot, I have to like angle it forward to get to the brake. So I, I would adjust that. I'm not sure if we've got any adjustability down there on the rear brake, but I just have to sit my foot up a little higher. It makes it a little awkward. The shifter's not as bad, but I kind of like where the foot position is. It gives me this kind of sporty-ish feel. I can go ahead and say with absolute certainty that I most likely will never own a cruiser in my life but I could kind of see myself owning one of these you know because you have the chill vibe but you also have the slightly attack position I hope it comes through the GoPro for you guys but this this cockpit area like with all this tank coming forward I kind of feel like a jet pilot type situation like I feel like I'm controlling something you guys know how like on naked bikes where we don't have a lot of stuff up front, you kind of feel like you're just floating through space. You you get the exact opposite of, of that on this. You have this like leading up into your dash that's minimal. There it is. Sheesh, where was that coming on at? There's a significant amount of power that comes on at like 6,000 RPM. I, uh, you can physically feel it push you forward more. Oh, we got a red light. Cool. Let's uh, let's check the brakes out. Downshifting, downshifting. I'm actually surprised how little the engine braking kind of came in on this. I would expect with a big bike like this, the engine braking would be pretty, pretty substantial. The thing I did like about that engine braking just then, when I was coming to a stop for that light, is that it was consistent. Like, it wasn't super bad, super bad. You know what I mean? Consistency is where you can really rely on a motorcycle. 
And when you can rely on your bike, that makes you be able to ride that thing so much faster. Yeah, we're in touring mode in third gear and like the engine braking will start pull, pulling you forward there. What's up other cruiser guy? Hey, a cruiser guy waved at me, woohoo! We passed the cruiser test. The, I wish the engine braking was a little more powerful, but like having that consistency, I mean like I would never have to use the brakes. I'll have to use the brakes at some point in this video to test them out for you guys, but right now, if I owned this bike, boy, trust, I would be engine braking all the time. So we're in touring mode and I can already tell around town, we're starting to get more of that Ducati feel. Uh, you know, typically Ducatis like to be ridden and if you ride them hard, they reward you for riding them hard. So in urban mode, everything's kind of like evened out. You know, if I let go of the throttle, I just kind of slowly come to a stop, engine braking slowly comes on. But now that we're in touring mode, it's starting to open the bike up more like engine braking starts pulling me forward a little bit as it's slowing me down and it's becoming more of the the beast that i know that this big ass engine can be all right we got the uh <laughs> the thing that i first referred to when i first rode a diavel i referred to it as a whale and turning it was not the most fun i can already tell you that's not the same here but let's see when we get to take a slightly bigger turn. Whoa, shit! <laughs> yes! <laughs> On a cruiser? Oh my goodness. So the one thing I don't like about cruisers is you feel this physical limitation of how hard you can ride the bike. That is not here. Like, you lean this bike over, and for one, this is a big-ass bike, and it has even a longer wheelbase than it used to, but that makes the bike so stable, but you can still flick the bike over. Like, what is this? <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, and the consistency of that freaking, uh, that freaking what? Oh my god, dude, I'm so excited about leaning this bike over and riding it. I forgot what I was saying. The way the power responds is this like linear give. It gives you just power consistently throughout the range. And it, it's just consistency. The power comes on consistently. The, the engine braking is consistent. It makes it enjoyable to ride because I'm not like, oh shit, something's about to happen. I just know. I just know riding it, it's like, here's how much power I got. You can do with it as you please. Yeah, I'm still not liking the rear brake now that I'm like using it. Like, look at my leg, it has to shift upwards to use it. I will say the rear brake works. Like, it's probably because of the weight of the motorcycle, I would imagine. We need to get into sport mode, boys and girls. Is it sport? Yeah, it's called sport, okay. We need to be in sport mode because we're about to get on the highway. Close throttle. Thank you for reminding me, Ducati. All right. We're coming up on sport mode, boys. And we are on a, what I have termed a sport cruiser. This is the only sport cruiser that I know about. But we don't have a big windscreen. I'm, uh, I'm not sure how the, how the wind on the highway is going to be. But I am interested in how acceleration will be on the highway. Looks like we're gonna get straight onto the highway because I'm damn sure not stopping at that. Man, having a cruiser that's enjoyable to lean over is such a rarity. This, no wonder this has a class of its own. It's like, there's no, there's no real competition for this bike. How many cops we got out today? Oh, look at all this free space. Whatever will we do? I don't see a cop. I'm in fifth, I'm in 4,000 RPMs, 5,000 going third gear. <laughs> so here's what I gather about the, the Diavel 1260. Uh, the power is not going to rip your face off. Like I start, I get on the highway and I rev it up and it pulls me a consistent amount throughout the range. I shift and that consistently continues, but a huge downfall 
that I'm now experiencing is the wind. I can confirm that the wind is effing terrible. This bike, if you are gonna do some long distance traveling, which it seems to be lovely for because it's got a really comfortable seat, feels super planted on the highway. But the wind is just beating me up. Let's talk about something good for a second. Cruise control, boys. So we got on cruise control, we'll set it, and then boom. I will tell you guys every time, I love cruise control. I will say that until every motorcycle I ride has cruise control. And until then, we will sit back and enjoy the Diabolus cruise control. Give us, uh, take us off cruise control. Yeah, so on the highway, when we're in six gear in chill mode, you can throttle it up and you got plenty of power. So the bike's not slow, but it's not that like ridiculous level of power that you might expect. It, this is, I would definitely consider this a controllable amount of power. At least for me. Obviously, I'm not saying this is a good beginner bike, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Some of these bikes have the level of power that they just, you know, like do like that. This is not one of those. All right, we got a big, big right-hander turn coming up. Man, look at that. Just back and forth on the highway. This bike ain't going nowhere. One of my favorite things about big bikes that are heavy, obviously bikes being heavy isn't a great thing, but the stability that they have is awesome. This feels phenomenal. Oh my goodness. Yes, bro. Yes to all of what just happened. This bike feels so freaking good leaning over it and it is a freaking cruiser. That is such a rare thing to have in a bike that is not a sport bike. This is, I mean, I keep calling it a sport cruiser, but like it really freaking is. It is comfortable to ride around, but you get this attacky position and you can have fun with it. What's odd is when I'm not, when I'm in sport mode and I'm giving it some gas, it does shake a lot under my butt. So look, like I'm in, if I'm not in the right rev range, the bike does feel like unsettled if I'm not in the rev range and doing it up. Yeah, it's weird. Ducatis like to shake when you're not in the exact spot in the revs that they want you to be. And if you're not in that spot, the bike just seems like unsettled and not like state, not stable, but like shakes a little bit. This Acura is killing all of my vibes right now, man. Yes! All righty, we're in sport mode and we're coming to, holy shit. Brakes are serious, boys. Gotta be a little careful with them. You, you do come to a, an abrupt stop, but you kind of want that on a bike that's this heavy. You know, you don't want to be in a in a bad spot and need to slam on the brakes and them not be there for you. I'm not sure what kind of brakes this bike has, but uh, I'm calling them adequate. This is our moment. <laughs> oh my lord! Thank God for wheelie control. Oh my lord. I could feel the rear of the bike being like, bro, I'm not allowed. I feel like the wheelie control was just in a babysitter saying like, you can't do that. Nope, you can't do that. Oh, I'm sorry, you can't do that. Revving this thing off the line. <laughs> you have got to do that so that the wheelie control has to do its job. You don't want it to have some cushy job where it doesn't have to work. You want it to work for its life. Look at this, dude, on a freaking cruiser. Oh my God, the wind sucks, but I'm gonna forget about the freaking wind after I'm done having an amazing time. Anybody turning that's gonna kill me? Nope. <laughs> oh my Lord. So I came into this turn a little hot and I laid on the front a little bit. That's a good point to bring up. 
this bike does have a six axis IMU which is basically a computer inside the bike telling the bike how it's leaning up and down front and back side to side that is what it uses for its wheelie control cornering ABS cornering ABS by the way is something I'm really interested in I don't really understand how it works but it basically gives you ABS in the corner if you guys aren't familiar with riding hitting the brakes hard in the corner is a terrible thing to do stands the bike up makes you run off the road and crash and hopefully not die but cornering ABS allows you to give the bike some brake and not rip your face off man around four or five grand this bike does something crazy it like gets some steroids my goodness I do know this bike is massively wheelieable just gonna go ahead and say I have no interest in doing that this bike is like twenty thousand dollars for the base model which is more than the freaking Jeep that we do the follow car shots on was when I bought it brand new I have no interest in doing some stupid shit on this bike except for throttling up I will do that <laughs> to have a bike that is this big this comfortable to ride and can be thrown around like this with such little input doesn't make sense in my brain there's a spark not firing in my brain right now that that lets this all make sense I'm like okay I'm on a heavy bike it's got a longer wheelbase it's stable it's stable on the highway when winds are blowing us back and forth then we get on this road and look barely any input and I can do that it just doesn't make sense and the brakes are there for us when we need them did not expect this I remember the first Diavel I ever rode it is one of the most popular first rides on the channel and I compared it to a whale it was this big bike it was hard to turn and it had a gross amount of power but you know it's kind of like a Hayabusa it's like it's fun to go in a straight line but then what you know what I mean I feel like this bike is got that power but it's controlled in a different way it gives you the power in a different way and it makes it more understandable for like how you ride like we're riding around town the vast majority of people that get motorcycles inevitably you're gonna have to ride around town this bike is phenomenal and you know when I first got on the bike I was saying I didn't really like where the the foot pegs were right they were a little higher up I kind of wanted them to be farther out like a cruisery situation I see why they are where they are they're high up so when I hit a turn or if I take this thing to the mountains and I want to have a good time or do some technical riding my foot pegs are higher up so that I got ground clearance to lean this thing over with a cruiser dude you're it's all comfy mode right you're like this and you, you can turn about you can lean the bike about that much before it's like scrape days you know what I mean with this bike nah nah dude and that body position it almost reminds you that hey I'm a sport cruiser you know you can lean me over don't feel like you can't lean me over and hit a turn hit a turn hard man I gotta say sport mode's fun you get that shaky Ducati it gives you the full engine but there's something about touring mode that it's like if sport mode is a shot of Jack Daniels it is everything it's like here's a small glass of kick your face but if you put the bike into touring mode it's like I don't know like a maker's mark with a with a splash of coke it just smooths everything out it makes it slightly more enjoyable whoa that's neutral but it says third you guys see this that's terrifying how did it get into neutral if I was going between fourth and third that's weird as hell I still like the bike though all right so guys this is the church we always pull into RIP praise Jesus that's my entry fee and uh, we're gonna get off the bike for a second and check it out you guys can tell the temperature should be cooling down soon we're leaving summer and coming into fall 
Look at that. Even around parking lots, one-handed of this big-ass machine, no problem. Can I fit through some cars somewhere? This looks like a yes to me. I will say when we're not going, it is a little complicated. Uh, my arms aren't quite long, so I have to really extend. I mean, I have to literally lean forward to get this thing all the way to lock. So there is that. Okay, so to turn it off, we just turn this down. We can also get down here. I don't like, like, can you guys see how tight in? Like, I would have to do this to get to that. Not a huge fan of that. One thing that I did see was really cool. The guys at the shop showed me, like, I literally have to do this. There we go. Check this out. So, steering lock, there's no key, right? If you pull this all the way and I think you hold this, turn handlebar, steering locked. Look at that. So, it's a button that locks the steering. I think that's really cool. All right, guys. So, we got the Ducati Diavel 1260. I honestly feel like this, from all the Ducatis I've ridden, is the best riding Ducati. Whoa. I said Ducati, I meant Diavel. Holy shit. Not the best Ducati I've ever ridden. The best Diavel I've ever ridden. I think it's a slick looking bike too. I'm not too big of a fan of the black and red of it. Surprisingly, I know those are typically the colors I'm a fan of. I kind of like this, this brushed metal look. I think I would go with something like this. If I was going to get this bike though, I will say I would get the S model. It's a couple grand more. And if you're already spending $20,000... It, you get full Olins, you get up and down quick shifter. I would definitely go with the uh, with the S model. So to get it unlocked, that's all it takes. Hell yeah, dude. Where's that DRL? Can't really see it though. That's launch control. No, no. I want to exit that so bad. I'm not gonna do launch control. Are you freaking kidding me? Never in my life. Okay, I want to confirm something that I saw online. Yes! Dude, look at the freaking blinker. This is the stock blinker that this motorcycle comes with. What is life? Are you kidding me? Y'all, Ducati get a slow clap for that freaking integrated turn signal, my boys. That's all I got, dude. I love the trellis frame. I love the look of it because it's, you know, it's a cruiser but I love the look of that. Single-sided swing arm. This thing's a beast, man. Let's get this thing finished up. I typically tell you guys to go check out my Instagram at C2DubPics if you want to see photos of the motorcycle, and I still recommend doing that. I take some dope photos that many of you may appreciate. So, 2019 Diavel 1260. I wish it was the S model. <laughs> yes fam oh my goodness so let's sum up this bike ducati 1260 diavel it's the diavel that's been tuned and worked to be a better bike for where people ride bikes i feel like where this bike shines is leaning it for a cruiser and riding it around town i don't think it's great in the highway but it's totally capable and I honestly, the only thing I think this thing would need to be good on the highway would be a, a little windscreen, which I'm pretty sure they offer. Because I saw some like side bags and stuff like that that you can get from Ducati. If you had that windscreen, I feel like this bike would be a phenomenal touring bike. It is insanely comfortable and I really do like this kind of like sporty cruiser body position that I'm in. I don't know, dude, it just makes me, it makes me feel comfortable, but gives me the reassurance that if I want to go hard, if I want to go to the mountains, I can with no problem. Especially a bike like this, I got cruise control and comfortable body position. I can cruise all the way up to the mountains, chill status, get to the mountains, put this thing in sport mode, and then just eat the mountain alive. I love a bike that can do that. And this is definitely one of those bikes. Who is this bike for? You know, you got to have some cash. The bike is, you know, like I said, 20 something grand for the base model. I don't see anybody 
getting this motorcycle that gets the base model. For a couple grand more, you get Olin suspension and up and down quick shifter, which would be phenomenal, especially when you're in sport mode and like riding this thing aggressively. I think that would be great. But, you know, power to you, everybody's got their own thing. Uh, I think this could be your one bike. You know, maybe you're looking for a cruiser, but you don't necessarily want to commit to that cruiser lifestyle. You know what I mean? Where you just cruise around. You want to have one bike that is cruisability, has the cruisability of a cruiser, but you also can go like dipping and diving. That's, that's your boy right here. Like I told you guys, this bike is in a class of its own. There's not really another cruiser that I can think about that fits what this bike does. So if you're in the market for a Diavel, you kind of, you're in the market for a Diavel. Like that's what you want, that's what you should get. I can say this isn't even the S model and it's the best one I've ever ridden. So I'm gonna say I highly recommend this bike, man. If you want, if you're looking, if you've got the cash, you're a fan of Ducatis and you wanna have that bike that can kinda do it all, you know, this is, this is where I would send you. Would I send you to this over a monster? Only if you value cruising more than you do sporty. I think the the, the monster kind of goes more to the sporty side. This goes more to the cruisery side, but both bikes are really good all-rounders. And then looks wise is, is subjective. I think the monsters look better, but this bike is by far the coolest looking cruiser ever to see the motorcycle market. I love that daylight running light. I love that daylight running like so much that when uh, on the Panigale that we're trying to, not trying, but we're rebuilding it to give away over a Rick Bike Rebuild, I actually wanted to take a DRL from the, the Diavel and put it on our Panigale. It ended up being too big of a trouble to try to do that, but that's how much I like that DRL. Anyways guys, that's my thoughts on the 2019 1260 Ducati Diavel. Uh, if you enjoyed this video make sure to hit that like button and big shout out to my boys over at mountain motorsports they are the guys that let me get these motorcycles and ride them around for you guys and let me you know what it's like riding around for the first time because as i'm sure a lot of you guys know doing test rides on motorcycles isn't the easiest thing to get done actually a little look into the future i'm trying to work out a deal with mountain to where you guys can get ridiculously low priced motorcycles if you use like a coupon code from first rides it's not a for sure thing yet but i would really love to be able to get you guys a really good deal on motorcycles if you are looking for bikes from mountain motorsports Woo! anyways guys if you guys are in the north georgia area they've got like i think five to seven locations here in north georgia if you want to see a bike they are the place to go to because they've got damn near every bike on the market and they allow me to do these videos for you guys so big shout out to them i'll have their links in the description and guys gopro still going i am chase on two wheels i appreciate you guys watching this video if you liked it make sure to hit the like button subscribe to the channel for more motorcycle content and if you got a buddy that's a ducati fan might want to share this video out because this is this is one of the top ducatis i've ridden in the last last little minute but anyways, guys, I'll see you guys on the next one where I hopefully ride a bike with a better positioned rear brake. And I'll see you on the next one. Later. All right, so outro crew one, the fact that you got to the end of a first ride, shout out to you guys because I know these videos are like half an hour long. But my question to you is, how do you feel about motorcycles? It seems like the newer bikes are stopping trying to be so powerful and working hard on being more re like defined like a better overall polished machine do you guys appreciate that or are you guys just like i want more power and that's it personally i appreciate the fire uh fighters that are keeping this town safe I personally appreciate like I'm not here like I want the most power all the time I would prefer motorcycle manufacturers to spend their R&D money on refining what they already have like the power plants that we have in these motorcycles are ridiculous I feel like if they continue to refine their machines and make them better for how we want to ride them I think we end up with better bikes but what do you guys think is it all about power 
or is it a total package that they need to work on? Let me know in the comments. I'll be uh, interested to see what you outro crew people let me know. <laughs> anyway, guys, I appreciate you getting in the video. You guys know I love you a long time. I'll see you on the next horse ride. Later.